Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. Well, Intel have divulged a ton of information, not only of its upcoming CPUs, but also GPUs and upsampling technology as well. And I wanna begin with the upsampling stuff first, because quite frankly, I find the direction Intel have gone for here rather interesting. I'm sure you'll agree. So I'm gonna give you the gist and then we'll go into the technical explanation. I want you to think of XESS, as it's being dubbed, is basically a hybrid almost of FSR in that it can work across different competitor architectures, but it seems to be much more NVIDIA DLSS-like in its execution. The bottom line is it seems to use um, AI upsampling but takes advantage of previous frames of animation, for example, motion vectors, but it does not require, say, tensor cores like NVIDIA's architecture does. So this means that it will be a little bit slower working on a competitor GPU. We'll get more into the specifics in just a moment, but it can do so. Now, obviously, this has a lot of ramifications in the industry. Technically speaking, and I'm guessing this because they've not divulged which architectures it would work on, in theory, this could probably even work on the PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X, for example. In fact, we'll get more into this in a moment, Intel have even stated that they worked quite heavily with Microsoft for full DirectX 12 Ultimate support. So yeah, while of course this is not the DirectX 12 um, Ultimate extension, that is this upsampling technology, it does have interesting, um, just, you know, it's, it's just a very interesting thought to, you know, road to go down because one of the problems of DLSS is that it only works on NVIDIA's architecture. Now this is obviously good in some ways in that NVIDIA can control the ecosystem, but it does mean that getting developers on board is a little more tricky because those development resources will only go to, for example, owners of RTX 20 and above GPUs. Owners of, let's say, an RX 6000 series or one of Intel's GPUs will not really see any benefit, and of course, neither will console owners. So this is a very interesting road for Intel to go down because in theory anyway, it should increase the speed of market adoption. And this I think has been a critical component of AMD's FSR technology. So yeah, let's have a quick look here and then we'll look at one of the demos from Intel. So uh, XE Super Sampling takes advantage of previous frames of animation, the velocity of various pixels, i.e. basically it's tracking them using motion vectors, and then obviously it can use that on a neural network to upsample. Now XESS, according to Intel anyway, hits the sweet spot, which is always nice, I mean they're confident in their own products. So at the very top here you can see a high resolution um, image now obviously that has the longest frame render time because it's a native image compare this to XESS using XMX you can notice here that the uh, frame render time actually has a small blue blob at the end so this is basically the time it's taking in the per frame to up sample from the lower resolution let's say 1080p now you can also notice directly below that is XESS DP4A. And again, it's upsampling to 4K, but notice how that bar is around twice as long. So why is this? Well, basically the first one that we mentioned is using a specific instruction on Intel's own GPU. So basically the bonus here for Intel XE owners is that using their upsampling technology, it will be faster than, well, if it was on, let's say, an RX 6000 card. However, no matter which way you slice it, and if you know Intel GPUs, that was a joke, by the way, um, it's still going to be much faster than rendering a native 4K image. Now, unfortunately, Intel haven't given a ton of performance metrics here because ultimately they are still being somewhat cagey of uh, their GPU's performance for obvious reasons but it is a very good indicator as to how well this will perform. And what's really cool is Lisa Pierce has already been showing off this technology in action. So this is not some theoretical thing. And actually moving on from the upsampling technology, it's worth noting that Intel themselves have confirmed that a ton of features will be available when the GPUs launch. 
Now, this basically means that we will get advanced streaming support. So those of you who want to stream on a Fortnite or whatever, you're good to go. There will also be advanced performance tweaks as well. So I assume this will be things like being able to force like MSAA or overclocking or whatever else on the GPU. And yeah, just overall, it looks like Intel have fought this through quite heavily. Now, honestly, given the fact that Intel have been grabbing a ton of talent, not only from NVIDIA and AMD, but it's not like the people who have been working there for a number of years are oblivious to what's happening in the industry. And obviously, they've been listening to a ton of feedback online and looking at what's popular. It could be really cool. Like, you know, I've said this in multiple videos. At the end of the day, I'm not telling you guys to buy anything until there are performance numbers. Like, fair enough, if you're rich, if you're really wealthy, and you're like, eh, I don't, I don't care if it's not that great in performance, I just want to test out new technology, more power to you. But, you know, if you're on a set budget, I would highly advise that you wait for reviews, wait to kind of see how the chips fall, so to speak, and then kind of go from there. But I am quite hopeful that Intel will provide a good solution here. And speaking of solutions, let's talk more about the hardware itself. So the first slide I'd really like to bring your attention to is XCHPG Leadership IP Performance Per Watt. Now this is being manufactured on TSMC's 6NM process. We've been hearing quite a lot of rumors about this and some you know, hints, but this is basically full final confirmation that this is the direction they've gone in. And you can notice yourself that they are stating that um, we're looking at a major improvement in not only clock frequency, but performance per watt as well. Just doing some back of the napkin maths, it's not too difficult to ascertain that these GPUs should hit low two gigahertz in operating speed. Now I assume that there will be difference in clock speed based on whether it's for a mobile solution, desktop solution, whether it's the higher end SKUs, the lower end SKUs, but either way this is looking like it's going to be operating at a fairly decent clock frequency and this obviously has tons of benefits not only improving you know throughput of the shaders but also when you run at higher clock frequencies as well you get things like the caches presumably although obviously have not disclosed all of this information yet they presumably things like caches will also operate at higher speeds as well and yeah, this is where things get really interesting. So Intel have provided some technical details now as to how their architecture works. And basically, long story short, their GPU is pretty much an evolution of their previous design, but definitely is almost kind of NVIDIA-like in some areas. So the XC core uses basically uh, multiple different units. So we have arithmetic units, caches, load stores, and so on and so on. So each arithmetic unit includes engines for floating point, integer vector operations, and also accelerate convolution and matrix operations for AI workloads. You can see several technical slides here which kind of go over the basics along with the render slice. And what's really interesting is if we look at the render slices themselves, well, you can indeed see that there are four ray tracing units, essentially one per each of the four rendering slices. And those will do pretty much what you would expect, bounding box intersection, triangle testing, and ray traversal. At its most basic, the um, XC GPUs will have 16 vector engines, these are 256-bit, and 16 matrix engines, these are 1024-bit. These make up an XE core. And again, as I mentioned a moment ago, each of these cores will have its own dedicated ray tracing unit. It will also support sampler, geometry, cache, and a shared pixel backend. And then basically you can clump multiple of these together depending on the level of performance that you're looking for. And then you put multiple of these units together depending on the performance targets that you're looking for. And they basically all share an L2 cache. Now, yes, I am going over this rather quickly in this video because quite frankly, we've got a lot of stuff to discuss, but I will also link Intel's own YouTube videos, which will be, of course, in the video description. If you're interested in this, I would highly suggest you go through it. I'm personally gonna be doing a little bit more of a deep dive and trying to get a bit more information on it. And then I'll probably do a more technical analysis on all of this, especially to the upsampling solution. It'll be very interesting to see a full technical breakdown when finally, of course, the solution is released. I'm gonna be very interested to see how XCSS 
compares against DLSS in quality and performance across a wide range of hardware. Now, yes, AMD does have FSR, of course, but I don't really feel that um, AMD believed internally that it was a DLSS competitor. It was a rather different approach. It was, you know, kind of AMD's own thing for a very different scenario. I kind of look at it that it's like trying to compare, I don't know, like a, a Porsche versus a helicopter. Now, yeah, sometimes you're going to really want to be in a Porsche and other times you're really going to want to be in a helicopter. You might have a preference depending on the scenario, but neither is technically better than the other. It's just that they have different uses and different uh, key strengths. I also want to mention that Intel have also been demoing its high performance computing uh, silicon as well. And this is Ponte Vico. Now this is not for gamers. Instead, this is for servers, data processing, that type of thing. And they've basically shown an A0 silicon current status. So Ponte Vico is currently in A0 silicon status and it's currently operating in just over 45 T-flops of FP32 uh, throughput with five TBPS in memory fabric bandwidth and two TBPS in bandwidth uh, connectivity. Now, I just want to mention right off the bat, I don't want to go super in depth into Ponte Vico because I don't know how many of you are going to be super interested in it. I will, of course, link the presentation down below in the description, but it is worth noting that the uh, architecture itself does change a little between, let's say, the gaming GPUs and uh, Ponte Vico. Essentially, they have just tweaked things based upon the workload, which honestly, if you think about it, makes kind of sense. It'll be very curious to see, though, just how well this performs against CDNA, for example, or rather CDNA2, when AMD launch it. I believe that they're gonna start having volume shipments by the end of the year, that is AMD. And finally, Intel have actually disclosed a ton of information regarding Alder Lake. I'm going to go over this pretty quickly because a lot of this we already knew anyway, but there are a couple of standout things here. So the first is beginning fall 2021, we have Intel Alder Lake reinventing multi-core architecture, single scalable SOC. So it goes from 9 to 125 watts and it's built on Intel's 7 process, all new core design, which is a hybrid uh, using Intel's Thread Director, industry-leading I.O., so of course this does mean that it supports PCIe Gen 5, DDR5, and so on and so on. Intel claim that the Connect here can be absolutely ridiculously fast, up to 1,000 gigabytes per second dynamic uh, latency optimization, with the I.O. fabric being around 64 gigabytes per second, memory fabric 204 gigabytes per second. As for the core and cache configuration, we're looking at 16 cores. That's eight high performance cores with uh, two threads per core. So that's 16 threads there. And the energy efficient cores do not have HT or SMT, whatever you want to say. So that's 24 threads total with 30 megabytes of L3 cache in the highest in SKUs. Another really interesting thing is that Intel are claiming around a 19% bump in IPC compared to the 11th generation. So this is actually a pretty big deal. Obviously, until we know final clock frequencies of the processes, it's quite difficult to get an exact handle on how these CPUs will perform. And of course, even if you you know, run a multitude of different benchmarks, you will of course find that IPC per application will vary anyway. But I do feel that Intel's Alder Lake will offer a pretty interesting option for gamers. And that really is kind of the key for me. I'm gonna be very curious to see how the market lies over the next six to 12 months. Obviously AMD will be countering with the Ryzen V cache processors, but I personally feel that those are going to be rather expensive. Although it's hard to deny that just AMD's strategy of previously more cores and now just more cash, it seems to be working out for them quite well. If the demos that AMD have shown off are any indicator at all as to the performance, just bolting on that huge chunk of cash has really just catapulted the performance of a Zen 3 based processor to the stratosphere. And it'll be very interesting to see what type of workloads benefit, let's say Ryzen V cache versus Alder Lake. 
Although, of course, the real war is probably going to be Raptor Lake versus Zen 4, and both of those are not going to launch until, well, probably Q3-ish or Q4 next year. Yeah, I feel that the CPU war is getting a little bit more interesting now. Let, let me know what your thoughts are on that. I mean, I kind of feel that until I actually test all the lake out, I'm going to have some level of skepticism, to be honest with you. But I am a little more hopeful, perhaps, than what I was, let's say, six months ago. But ultimately, for me anyway, right this moment, my main excitement around Intel is probably around their GPUs, just because of the state of the PC market at the moment. I just, and I know I've said this a hundred times at this point, but I feel like another player is going to be so, so critical. The only negative, the only concern I have is that, again, we are relying on TSMC. I'm hoping that Intel have secured high enough volume from their 6NM manufacturing process. Guess we'll see. With that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.